Coming up on Talk is Cheap, NASA and the ESA Photoshop more images because, hell, why not? Talk is cheap. We're cheapest talking. Talk is cheap. Today, I am in right here with my buddy Dan Holfeld and my other buddy Pete Hallblad, and we have some great topics. Well, topic for you today. I found this just recently. Just came out. Um, well, that just came out, but March twenty third, twenty sixteen. So recently, mysterious signals orig- originating from a comet has the scientific community perplexed. I like that word, perplexed too. So. Here it is. I'm going to give it to you in a nutshell. So it's a comet with some sort of signal? It is a comet. Very cool. With a signal. So in a nutshell, <clears throat> um, this was sent to... Let me go down to the video here. Um, I forgot the guy's name. Oh, it doesn't have it on there. Uh, oh, wait. No, it does. Wait down here. This guy, uh, Secure, Secure Team. Secure Team. Yep. Yeah. Watch a lot of his videos. Why not? I guess the email was sent to him. Now, the email was sent through an Onion uh, server type thing. So it had multiple different IPs and couldn't be tracked back. And apparently it's a... Uh, European Space Agency whistleblower. And what he's done is he went ahead and sent this email. Uh, I'm just going to paraphrase most of it, but he's, it, what it says in its essence is the uh, Rosetta probe that we sent to the Comet 67P was not just to land a probe on a planet or on a comet just to check it out. It was sent there as reconnaissance. How far away was this comet? It's like a 10 year trip there. Holy shit. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a long time. At yeah. least about a decade. And this decade. is moving, so they have to do trajectory and all that. Yep. Holy shit. Yeah, there's some serious math yeah. and communications yep. involved. Now, this, as far as for my little bit of research, because this, like I said, it's, I didn't do a huge amount, but this wasn't the closest comet we could have went to either. So, again, they said that they chose this one for certain reasons. And what they're trying to make us believe is that. Uh, NASA saying, hey, this is just happens to be a comet that we want to check out. No big issue. It only took 10 years and a billion dollars to go there. And what this guy is, the whistleblowing is that there's signals coming from there. And the big thing is that this comet seems to be able to change its trajectory whenever the hell it wants, which is, well, it's unheard of. <laughs> yeah. Yep. You, know. you know, unless, and I guess I don't know how much the tra- tra- trajectory is changing uh, unless it's being acted upon by some other huge gravitational force that we're not seeing out there. Yeah. You know, that's the other option. But um, if you're trying to launch a, uh, you know, a, an explorer, a, a, you know, whatever you want to call it, the, you know, they launched the probe, the probe out there. Thank mm-hmm. you. Yep. And it's moving. Uh, you're going to know really quick. Because as you're going to constantly yeah. be making adjustments on your way out there, yep. right? Didn't this you happen know? with Hale Bop? I heard it was like it was supposed to come right for us, and then it kept getting like well, the thing of it is, or whatever. I, ooh, I don't know. On top of that, when you're looking at a comet and it's so far out, I mean, you you have an idea right away that oh, it's gonna it's gonna travel in this line, but then you watch it for a little bit longer because depending on it, it could twist and rotate in a way that might change its trajectory, or we think it's going straight, but then all of a sudden you notice it starts to curve a little bit. So there's a little bit of this, it could change, but th- they're talking like a, a pretty drastic change in a way that they've done enough research to say this should be the line it's flying on. All of a sudden, now it's kind of changed its direction. Now, here's the reason why we think they went here. Uh, the whistleblower sent out uh, images and that, that were unairbrushed and untouched, which I'm going to show a video that um, what's the secure team did uh, at the end. They kind of showed the untouched and the, the touched up uh, okay. NASA video. Oh, it's but, along the same vein of like the... <clears throat> Excuse me, the Mars pictures and the Moon pictures, yep. and I'll get a doctor to take the alien bases off yep, them. And, okay, absolutely, which you know good. we've covered a awesome. hundred times on here. Yeah, it? which is it's really scary when you when you think about it. And how many times has something like that come up here? They're uh, they're touching up photos, and more and more people are coming up saying, "I was touch, I was yeah. touching up photos yep. for them." And as soon as they come out and say it, they're ju- they're just wacko. Yet one of those two pictures is touched up. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Uh, which one? Which one? Yep. Uh, we're going to roll down. This is uh, off of uh, ufoaholic.com. Uh, now, th- I just actually found this uh, website not too long ago. I-, I stumbled upon it, and they have some really good stuff on here. Um, like, again, it's all conspiracy, so take it as it is. Some of it's kind of like, really, did we go that far? Some of them are like this one seemed to be pretty uh, pretty good. So here's a picture in the uh, 
Looks like a little city or something. Yeah, yeah this is, right angles, right yeah, angles. Yeah, so. straight lines and 90 degree angles yeah. are almost impossible to do in, ma- in nature. And here is the unairbrushed um, photo. And as you can see, we have, a, we have a right angle, this big shadow. Now, that could mean that this is actually a, a mountaintop. But as you can plainly tell, there's a faint white line here that's a 90 degree. Then you have this darker 90 degree mm-hmm. here. So this is this actually makes a perfect square down It there. sure looks like it, doesn't it? Impossible in nature. You know, there's just no real way to do that. So, of course, we have these little uh, black dots, which could be shadows being cast by, you know, something, which would be up here because the shadows all seem to be coming down, um, which means also, oops, sorry, which also means that this shadow here is in the wrong spot. If this is a shadow, that means the sun's coming this way. So that would mean something bigger is here. So that means it would be dug down. Now, I'm yeah, not to me, that's it looks dug down to yep. me if at first blush. Not 100% with that one, but still. So the whistleblower, he has a uh, couple of email, a uh, couple paragraphs in his email, and he pretty much just says, you know, there's no way NASA would spend, and the you know, ESA would spend billions to go to this you know, place. So then they have, uh, I don't know what the heck this one is. But their radio bursts are being uh, heard, and they have well, all these little. If you remember when they sent uh, Rosetta out there to this comet, it didn't land. Remember, it bounced funny, and it didn't yeah. land where they thought it was, and they didn't know if it was even going to wake up because it wasn't getting the sun that it needed. So, mm-hmm. I think this kind of shows just uh, it shows where the probe is coming in from lower left. Oh, and it's landing to right. Okay, yeah, touchdown! Yeah. Oh, I see a touchdown <clears throat> point, and before, yeah, so it did land. So it's definitely on there, which would be interesting because if there are radio signals coming off of this comet and they, we did go there to uh, do reconnaissance, of course you would say, well, the probe landed, but we're not getting anything back because then they don't have to tell you what they found out, right? Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. That's All classified. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> or, oh, it just broke. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're just, and then they just tell us that. So this is the end of his uh, video, <laughs> and, and uh, we'll go ahead and watch. And all it does is show the, the pictures. Airbrushed image released by the ESA. Boy, that is an airbrush or not, that is a pretty impressive so photo. The ESA oh, is it's a gorgeous photo, like isn't the it? Europe NASA. Uh European <laughs> Space Agency. Okay. So this is airbrush. That's that same uh triangle that we saw. Yep. No, no, this is the circle, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, this is the dome. This is the dome. This looks like a satellite dish. I to mean, me. it's I think it looks This is the unairbrushed. So this is what was sent with the email. Uh, they're gonna zoom in, I think. Here, yep. anytime. There we go. And there's that dome, boy, and spheres like that too. I mean, look at that. And that would that looks almost like a large radio um, telescope. Yeah, it looked like it had a shadow under it. Yep. Yeah, or a or a and yeah, it could be. A, yeah, I, I was thinking more of like a biodome thing, but no, a radio com uh, sat, uh, yep. dish makes more sense to me. Wow, look at that. One of those is airbrushed. One of them isn't. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they did it, yeah, changed it. And if you were to say that this guy faked it all, why would he go through all the IP addresses? Why would he have to hide his tracks? He says he's going to release more, and this is another unreleased rock. Yeah, I can't wait for that. And what the heck's going on with the end of that? It looks like a big cave in there, doesn't it? Yeah. In the upper left. Yep. So there's that 90-degree <clears throat> angles and the little Boy, that does, that does look like some sort of factory or something, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. And there it is, airbrushed. Huh. Original building complex. Shit. Boy, I mean, unless no. somebody would have put it in there, but it, I don't know. And, and you can you would see think it, that'd be harder to put in than it would be to take no, out. You know, of course. To put it in. You think so? Yeah. The other thing is, I, while doing research, I like the idea of uh, what they call um, generation ships. So if we were ever to travel through this, you know, through space, there's only a few ways we could do it. And one of those ways is to make a massive space station that moves. So a massive ship that you could put. Uh, biodomes on and you could raise cattle on and all these other things people will just live their life as yep. they're moving through it's, yeah it's called a generation ship because everybody would just live normally on this ship but it would be perpetual you know yeah going as fast, really fast as it could out to explore exactly so cool. it'd be like 17 generations to get anywhere so it wouldn't be you that's getting to the alpha century so there's actually be, a movie on a netflix or TV show that did this. Okay, so yeah, that's something like that. So we generation upon generations, we are your great 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 grandchildren would make it. Now they said that making a ship would be difficult. It would be easier. Would be to take an asteroid, 
and make the city, you know, inside the, the asteroid. asteroid. Just let that go. Exactly, because the asteroid would there would have all your raw materials that you don't have to carry with you. Because a ship would have to carry all the raw materials. You'd have water. You'd have iron ore. All you'd that have stuff. Everything. You, so you'd build factories. You'd live in the asteroid, which of course would protect you from all their debris. It would protect you from radiation. So yep. all this other shit. It so, would protect you from other debris. Well, yeah, if it's big you'd enough, you'd be living on the it inside. It just seems like it would be too easy to hit something if you're flying out on a rock like that. You're a massive asteroid. The only thing you have to worry about would probably be other massive asteroids and planets and, or whatever. You know, like that. But, but maybe that's why you have <clears throat> some sort of equipment that you can use to change the trajectory of the yeah. comet, so you can miss the big stuff Very true. as you see it coming up. Right. So, and what's really interesting about this? Not only would uh, making a, a base out of an asteroid then flying the asteroid make a lot more sense and very feasible. We also had, I think we covered the, the massive uh, structure in front of the sun, and then we just had these uh, short uh, short wave radio bursts that we uh, are repeating. I mean, all three of these are, are pretty, they're very, very interesting. It's all within, within the last year that it's happened. The massive uh, structure in front of the sun, no one really knows what it is. The short wave radio bursts, they thought that they could only be created by two neutrino stars hitting or yeah, or um, some other kind of really huge cosmic uh, deal. Mm -hmm. But they're repeating, which doesn't happen. So you have to almost say it could it be, you know, is, is something hitting and hitting and hitting and causing this? Or is it intelligent life? A repeating signal would, you know, you would think intelligent life would be a possibility. They say they would, it would create, it would require a huge amount of energy to make a shortwave radio burst the way it is, repeat. Enough energy in the sun with a massive you know, structure in front of it, harvesting the energy from the sun to create these shortwave radio bursts would make sense. And then you have, like, this is one point. Then you have a comet that's moving around, and it makes sense to actually make a comet into your space station ship. I mean, we, we have these things. that I'm not saying that it means that there are aliens or that they're moving, but... We're getting to the point now where there's a lot of, you know, things happening in the news that kind of points towards intelligent life. Well, that and even even in more recent times, say the past five, ten years, private industry has started to get out into space. Oh, like started dinking, yeah, and dinking around with it. Okay, for so, like harvesting materials or well, just that they've they started private industry has finally been able to afford spaceships to start going and exploring out there. Mm -hmm. So, a civilization that maybe was more advanced than us, and maybe they had a similar economic structure. Maybe you've got very bad people or very weird people with money that are doing stuff like this. No. You know. I mean, and there's already companies that are looking at our asteroid belt saying, hey, there's a shit ton of iron ore up there. There's and diamonds gold, up there. And gold, you get gold. one of them, yeah, oh, yeah. you know. They're, they're already looking at ways to harness that, bring it close to Earth, and then, you know, harvest that, that meteor. Yep. So if you harvest enough of it and carved out a hole through some jet engine, because, I mean, really, you just have to have some way to start it out. Some sort of nuclear propulsion, which really. Which isn't you know. far-fetched at all. So, I mean, even yeah. if you were to use an ion drive, which would take, you know, it takes so long to get started... But it would slowly push. I mean, you could really finish the building while it's starting to move, and then you could finish it up right before it took I off. I mean, because you thing. can see, obviously, 20 years into the future where this – I mean, we, we spotted this comet 20 years ago, right? Yep. That's <coughs> what so I you have to 20 ask. years to move your trajectory. So, so they sent this out <coughs> – Excuse me. This probe 10 years ago, you said, right? Yep. Was it? Is it heading towards Earth? What caused them to send a probe to it? I don't, I don't think it's heading towards Earth, and I think it's – an elliptical orbit like it's going around which is a good point because i don't know if they sent it to when it was the closest it'll ever be i think we sent it when it was further out so we can didn't keep it, didn't gathering it, didn't it information come into our solar system? didn't it come into our solar system and and that's where we got it google, google where where is comet 67p oh you can right click <laughs> is a jupiter family comet discovered 1969 oh, originally from the uh, Kuiper Belt. It's in a orbital current orbital period of six point four five years. Rotation is practically twelve point four hours. Okay. So we've known about it for a while, then, right? Yeah. But it wasn't until about twenty years ago that we picked up the radio signals. So uh, they are they sending probes to a lot of asteroids? No, this no, is the this first is one. The first one. <laughs> this, and this is a comet. Yeah, and the first time. <laughs> oh, is I this mean, the first you think one or second coming one? closer too. Yeah, I mean, I thought maybe they shot it out uh, while it's coming far this out. Way. Yeah. Um, and not in a cool way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is, though. Jupiter is cool. 
Is this this isn't the same one where they had that lighter than air damn near um carb or um that gel. Remember that car- lighter than air gel? It looks like a Magellan. Cloud. You're walking on air. No. <laughs> but they got behind. Challenge. They got behind a comet, and the this array came up, and they have this weird carbon material. It looks like a, it's almost lighter than air, and it had it gathered all these particles from the comet. Do you remember? That wasn't the same one. I never heard of that. You never no, heard of that? I don't. I didn't. That's interesting because that material that they use is like cutting edge. I mean, Area Fifty One stuff. I'm surprised you didn't hear about that huh. one. So it, it it was on in November of 2014. It was the first. Uh, Phil A was the first spacecraft to land on a comet nucleus. There we are. And then they already got to airbrush shit out. God damn. It's just like, imagine what's out there. Go back to school, get high government clearance, go work to NASA, and you can go it's see the... Building 18 in Texas at the NASA Space Center. Oh, that's one everyone talks about, right? Yeah. So there it is, rotating. All right, like I said, it just came out just saw it, or recently. I thought, well, why not? It's interesting. We should see what happens, right? Yeah, Absolutely. Maybe we'll get more information, or by the time this is on YouTube, maybe there'll be more information on there. Yep. We'll follow it up with a little, you know, expert. <laughs> How come it, you don't see a tail on it? I don't think, is it not close enough to the sun to actually you start gassing, the, off gassing off stuff? Off? Um, I don't know. So. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a good question. Well, I hope you all like the, the show. I mean, like I said, I haven't got a lot of information. It was just newer, and I got really excited about the shortwave uh, radio cool. burst. I got really excited it, about the... It makes total sense, though, about how they wouldn't spend a billion dollars just to go land on a comet unless there's a reason to do exactly. it. Exactly. You know? yeah. Oh, you're going to go land on a hunk of rock in the middle of nowhere. Just spinning. because we can, when there's so much more moon and Mars stuff that could be done, they could have sent 20 probes to Mars for that cost, yeah. you know? Yeah, very true. Very true. Just saying, or maybe why not Venus or one of the moons of Europa? You get a start yeah, on that Mars stuff, Jesus Europa, Christ. Yeah, Europa has liquid water. Venus, yep. we could, or yeah, I guess Mercury. That's the next... No, is it Venus that we can live in the in the stratosphere, or is that Mer- no? It wouldn't be Mercury. That'd be too Mercury, close to Venus, Venus Earth. Earth, yes, Venus. If you like forty miles above the surface of Venus, it's only like seventy or eighty degrees, and it has oxygen. You know, enough, enough oxygen, oxygen to breathe, so you could crack. crack you could the breathe. You're still, you're still gonna have to have a, a respirator. Sure. But you could walk around with like a fireman's jacket on, and you'd be fine. I mean, it's really similar to Earth. They're saying that that's e- it would be easier to like take blimps, send them over there, and colonize Venus. And colonize yeah. Venus. Is that not nuts? Plus, yeah, then you'd have a cloud city, and then you could harvest all the new uh, shit from everywhere yep, else. Yep, and then you could meet Lando Calrissian, and maybe the Millennium Falcon. I would like that. Star Wars. <laughs> he was so, he was in the Cloud City, right, Lando? Yes, yes he was. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, anything else, gentlemen? No, that was cool. I, that was a good one. I like that. I was just gonna get worked up about NASA again in Mars. Yeah, feel we had the other time. Yeah, I, I could hear it in your voice. You're like, I'm just gonna go after him like a pit bull to a red. Oh, that piece was the most fakest bullshit mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we get a lot of comments of people saying that NASA's a bunch of guys just faking shit out and you know this and that and scooped from the sieve of the cacophony. <laughs> 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 that fucking acting bullshit. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that 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 press release was horrible. I agree, but. Well, anyway, I hope you all enjoyed it. And it only home. cost every American $7. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this movie costed you less than 7 bucks per American citizen. And look at the excitement that we have brought. Well, I want to thank you all for tuning in and watching us this week. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Um, send us any ideas that you have for uh, articles or shows you want to see us cover. Um, let us know how, how you think we're doing, good or bad. Apparently, there's more people that like to talk about how bad we're doing than the other way around. That's usually what happens, yeah. <laughs> we don't mind. So, all right, anyway, have a great day and you know, keep your eyes open, keep looking at this guy. Just for your safety videos, Pete. Oh Lord Jesus, this a fire. Let's go. Oh Lord.
Jesus, it's a fire. Let's go. We ain't gonna be in no fire. Not today. <laughs> fire. My special dudes is gonna help me well. It's like a mixture of Mountain Dew and sugar and... <laughs> 